From maple leaves to hockey stars, the country of Canada, while relatively young, has a lot of beauty and complexity packed as tightly as the snow on a well-trod ski slope. So today, we're going to explore our top 10 facts about the captivating nation of Canada. I'll see you after the globe. Number one. Don't not forget about Timbits. While you may know that Tim Hortons is a famous restaurant chain that provides Canadians with their beloved Timbits and other treats, did you know that Canada tops the world in donut consumption? Canadians consume around 1 billion donuts every year, and the country has more donut shops per capita than any other country. And when Canadians are picking up their donuts, they almost always grab a coffee too. Seven out of every 10 coffees sold in Canada are sold at Tim Hortons. Number two, skiing is a national pastime. It's no surprise that a country with an abundance of gorgeous mountains and some of the coldest weather in the world is very into skiing and snowboarding. Canadians have turned winter sports into their obsession, with an estimated 2.5 million skiers and snowboarders in the country, and built some of the best ski resorts in the world, like Whistler Blackcomb in British Columbia and Lake Louise in Alberta. And this reputation for quality slopes brings both locals and tourists to their resorts in droves, with Canada's 294 ski resorts boasting over 19 million visitors per year. The obsession has also paid off on a competitive level, with Canada winning 190 99 medals since the start of the Olympic Winter Games in 1924, which is the fifth most Winter Olympic medals in the world. Hey, if it's gonna be cold anyway, you might as well have some fun. Number three, what's with the leaf? Maple trees were always going to be important to Canada. They give tasty syrup, they can be used for wood products, and Canada's 10 different species of native maple trees grow all over the country. But the first use of the maple leaf as a Canadian symbol was in 1834, when the Société Saint-Jean-Baptiste, an association celebrating French-Canadian language and culture, chose the maple leaf as its emblem. After that, the maple leaf appeared on coins and newspapers, and in 1965, Canadians chose the maple leaf for the Canadian flag. Wait, 1965? What did the flag look like before? Here's what Canada used to use as its de facto flag before 1965, called the Canadian Red Ensign flag. Yeah, the maple leaf was a good call. Number four, the border is king. Depending on how far north you go, Canada can get very cold, as cold as negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 28.8 degrees Celsius in the country's Northwest Territories. Even in some of the southernmost cities of Canada, snow is a common occurrence. Because of the cold overall climate and various other economic and social factors, a huge percentage of Canadians live within a few hours drive of the border with the United States. In fact, 90% of all Canadians live within 150 miles of the US border. Almost all of the Canadian cities you might have heard of, like Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and Ottawa, are actually border cities and are heavily enmeshed with the economies of US cities, like Chicago, Detroit, Buffalo, Seattle, and others. Which brings us to number five. Number five, the specialist relationship. While it's often said that the United States and the United Kingdom have a special relationship with a unique bond that comes with a shared history and shared values, the idea of a special relationship would be better applied to relations between Canada and the United States. The US and Canada share the world's longest border, a shared language, values, and media, and sometimes Vancouver even pretends to be Los Angeles, San Francisco, and other US cities for TV shows. But it's not just about shared culture. Every day, over $1.7 billion in goods and services cross the US-Canada border. So even though the United States is the largest economy in the world, that large economy would grind to a halt without the constant help of the Great White North. And since we mentioned Vancouver, number six, Vancouver is quietly fantastic. Though Toronto is one of the cultural hearts of Canada, we thought we'd highlight the beautiful and welcoming city of Vancouver over on Canada's west coast. It has all the charm and beauty of the American Pacific Northwest, plus a lot more. Vancouver's beautiful Stanley Park is right next to downtown and provides a scenic respite from the scores of residential towers that have sprung up as the city continues its massive growth. And filmmakers love using the natural beauty and scenic metropolis of Vancouver in films like Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Deadpool 2, with the latter heavily featuring Vancouver's iconic green Lionsgate Bridge, a gorgeous suspension bridge that rivals the beauty of the Golden Gate. 
And if you'd rather dive into diverse culture than spot filming locations, you'll be glad to hear that over 40% of Vancouver's population is foreign-born. So you're sure to be surrounded by different ways of being, including one of the largest Chinatowns in North America. And did we mention there's even whale watching? And it only snows 10 days a year in Vancouver. Is this even Canada? Number 7. First Nations in Canada, there are three categories of indigenous Canadians based on the Constitution. There are the Inuit people, who traditionally live in the Arctic and subarctic northern regions of Canada, the Métis, which began in Canada as a French term for a person of mixed European and indigenous heritage, but has since blossomed into a distinct and thriving community, and First Nations, which encompasses all other indigenous groups in Canada, such as the Cree, Ojibwe, and Nietzsche as mentioned in our United States episode, a great resource to explore the tribal lands of indigenous people in North America is the website native-land.ca. If you live in Canada, you can look up your address and see the traditional lands in your area. Number 8. Proudly Canadian Because Canadians often work in the United States and speak the same language and often have similar accents, the contributions of Canadians to global arts and entertainment is often too easily overlooked. To help remind ourselves which cultural icons have their roots in Canada, here's a partial list of well-known Canadians. Some famous Canadians include Keanu Reeves, Elliot Page, Matthew Perry, Simu Leo, Anna Paquin, Sandra Oh, Taylor Kitsch, Denis Villeneuve, Maitreyi Ramakrishnan, Steve Nash, Will Arnett, Drake, The Weeknd, and many more. Yes, we know Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Gosling are Canadian too, but that seemed kind of obvious, right? Number 9. Canadians have the right to apologize. While it may be a stereotype in places like the United States that Canadians are overly polite, your opinion of Canadians' politeness may vary wildly if you come from another culture. Having said that, Canada did pass a law in 2009 called the Apology Act. So let's have some fun finding out about that. The Ontario law is actually similar to other laws in the United States and elsewhere, and simply clarifies that a person can say they're sorry for something without that apology being used as an admission of guilt later in court. Meaning Ontarians who find themselves naturally wanting to apologize in difficult situations won't have to keep quiet to spare themselves a lawsuit. So the next time you're in a fender bender in Toronto, apologize all you want. Number 10. Polar Bears Everywhere the city of Churchill in Manitoba lies in northern Canada on the shores of the Hudson Bay and is home to around 870 people and thousands of polar bears. Churchill is known nationally as a great place for tourists to catch a glimpse of the beautiful creatures, and so much so that it's branded itself the polar bear capital of the world. But for the town's residents, the bears can also be a bit of a nuisance. Polar bears so commonly stroll through their streets that residents of Churchill have developed a custom of keeping their car doors unlocked at all times. How does that help anything, you may ask? Well, if you come upon a polar bear in Churchill and need a quick escape, you can just jump into any car in town and hide out until the animal goes on their way. And that's the list. We hope you enjoyed getting to know just a bit more about the diverse and exciting country of Canada. Comment below to let us know what kinds of things you'd like to learn top 10 facts about next. And subscribe to our channel to make sure you get our newest videos. Thanks for watching.